So hello, everybody. Um, good morning. Thank you for inviting us to present today. Um, this is our first exposure to IPC, so um, it's really been great to learn more about the community and um, interesting and all the interesting work you guys have been doing. So um, again, thank you. Um, we're excited to tell you a little bit about our eHealth monitoring garment and um, basically how we approach this particular example of an e-textile. Um, here we're trying to achieve a balance in comfort and performance for physiological monitoring. Um, I'd like to just walk you through how we approach this particular challenge. Um, first, I'd like to introduce our team. So um, again, my name is Kristen Cable. Um, I am the VP of our Research and Development Center uh, at CRG. I have a mechanical engineering background. Um, CRG is, is probably not a name you guys have, have heard very much, but we're a, a small aero and defense company uh, based out of Dayton, Ohio. Uh, we're really focused on transitioning our research and development and product development um, through spin-off businesses or potential licenses, um, but that's definitely a, a major focus that we have. Um, we have several different technology portfolios, which are fairly diverse. Um, so this includes medical and sensors, of which this is a part, but we also have materials, aerospace, power and energy, uh, advanced manufacturing, high temperature composites. So each one of these centers provides expertise and technology that we can bring to bear to, to solve all sorts of problems and develop new products. Um, in addition to the physiological monitoring garment, which I'm here to talk about today, um, we do also specialize in man portable power solutions and have developed some wearable sensor pods for chemical and particulate monitoring. So um, we definitely have a, a strong DOD focus and um, really leverage the SBIR program um, for that non-dilutive funding that uh, Brian mentioned earlier. So I um, uh, also wanted to introduce Trang Young. She's our lead engineer on the project. And um, she's also on the line here. And hopefully, um, if I can't answer any of the questions that you guys may have, um, she might be able to do that. She's our, our lead electrical engineer. Um, we also partnered with Clemson University on this program, um, particularly Chris Cole and John Folk, and they were just instrumental in leading the textile design in concert with CRG. So just some great folks at Clemson there uh, that we've been working with now for a number of years. Um, um, our government sponsor is uh, Bill Sarian, and he's out of Usarium. And um, we've also been working with Carol as well, who I think most of you know. So um, basically, I'll cover a few topic areas today, um, including the challenges we're trying to solve, the approach we took, and then dive a little bit into the technology development and testing. So we are developing this e-health garment for our warfighters, uh, especially those that may be at risk for overheating. So these men and women and you know, the people that are responsible for their safety need this physiological health status data to provide situational awareness, uh, prevent adverse events, or you know, possibly inform uh, decisions during training or potentially during an actual mission. So uh, a lot of great uses for this. Um, and again, I know I probably don't uh, preach into the player here, and I don't have to go into uh, a lot of detail here with the current off-the-shelf solutions, but um, you know, really it is a constant struggle between accuracy and comfort, um, and, and that's what we're trying to address here. So we have those patches that adhere to the skin, which really provide some great data, but um, if any of you guys have worn these, uh, they can be extremely uncomfortable, irritating the skin, um, sometimes you have to shave um, with some of these technologies. So, um, so there's you know some great things, but also some um, some some cons. Um, oh, now I realize I'm gonna start my video. Sorry guys, I never started that. Um, so so also chest straps. Um, those are another wearable that's been around you know decades now. So those are um, those are a potential solution to get similar data, but they are wrapped. You know, tight around the chest, um, they can be bulky, they tend to interfere with other clothing and equipment um, that's worn. So, so obviously those have some drawbacks. Um, of course, watches, 
Um, but really some of the data from those watches isn't necessarily as accurate as we'd like them to be. Um, a lot of them rely on EEG sensors um, and have to go through some advanced algorithms to really get um, good data there. So um, then there are some clothing options, but these tend to have hard electronic modules, um, especially those ones that are out there right now. So that could potentially make them uncomfortable or potentially inaccurate and more um, subject to motion artifacts. So any textile is obviously a, a promising path to take in uh, or to take, uh, uh, to take to solve some of these challenges. So that is why we are here today. Um, okay, so. So we didn't uh, necessarily take the approach of edit embedded printing or wiring or things like that. We actually decided to separate the electronics from the garment. And our approach was really aimed at blending the best features of chest straps, adhesive systems, and garments into a, a streamlined base layer. Um, so Brian kind of outlined uh, the various um, types of, of garments, I think, pretty well. So we were focused here on the, on the base layer um, that he had, had mentioned. So, um, what we Kristen, decided, oh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Um, your audio changed partway into your presentation. Um, it's oh, quite, okay. You know, when you started out, it was loud and clear. I don't know if you had a different microphone in use. Yeah, is that any better? Oh, 100 percent better. Okay, yeah, I, I kind of it, it dropped out, and so uh, I think that's what the issue was. Can you hear me now, then? Yeah, that sounds great. But, okay, sorry about that. No okay, so, um, so I'll just jump back into this. Basically what I was um, saying on the previous slide is, is we, we wanted to go this e-textile route. And um, what we're trying to do here is um, basically separate the electronics from the garment. Um, we developed a, a system of sensor islands that attach to the garment in a, uni in a unique way. And um, we're leveraging a, a, a a specific garment structural design and distributed power and sensing. So we're kind of relying on putting the power near the areas that need to be sensing. And we have um, some unique power technologies that, that enable us to do that. So the sensors actually talk to each other um, and to a phone or tablet or watch um, through wireless communication. So that's the, that's the approach that we took to be able to um, send information um, to and from the particular um, sensor. So we kind of call this a sensor island, so you'll meet, hear me refer to that um, uh, several times throughout the presentation. Um, and the goal here was really to be able to take out these sensor islands, you know, throw them on a charger, and then throw your shirt in the laundry, um, and just keep it really easy for the user. So you could potentially have, you know, one sensor island and then multiple shirts. Um, which would make daily wear pretty easy. Um, you know, and ultimately, I think a big piece of this too is keeping the, the price of the system down and keeping it affordable. So um, we're trying to, you know, leverage the best in garment and electronics manufacturing techniques and, and ultimately bring a, a solution to the warfighter faster. Um, so I'll step through this in three different sections. So the first is the garment. Um, so this includes sensor location, structure, and fit. Um, then I'll walk through the electronics portion. So this includes sensors, power, and packaging. And then um, obviously then the last step would be the integration. And so this includes the communication and the connections. Uh, I don't have a, a, a lot of time today, so I'll just kind of scratch the surface on these items. Uh, the first being the garment design. So um, one of the, the first considerations in the garment design was really understanding that our customer is very active, constantly moving, bending, turning. Um, so it's important to minimize that motion artifact of the sensors to make sure we're getting a clean signal. Um, and Clemson was able to, to translate those needs into a, a multi-zone garment, as you can see on the right. And that's structured to keep the sensors in place. Um, using some high power fabric with appropriate grading to, to maximize that comfort piece. Um, we definitely didn't want this to feel too constrictive or interfere with breathing or the performance at all. Because, I mean, ultimately, you know, who's, gonna wanna, who's going to want to wear something if they um, really can't do their job while wearing it? Um, there's, there's definitely the use of active seams in here, um, placed appropriately for, for comfort and fit. Again, that was just a major, major drive for us. 
Um, there's a lot of considerations uh, to also create a garment that they would want to wear, um, not only from a comfort perspective, but also from a looks perspective. We, we wanted something that was pretty approachable, something that um, didn't look too crazy or out there, something that they were comfortable wearing. Um, we uh, started with traditional sizing from extra small to extra large. We actually currently have samples in small, medium, and large right now. Hopefully more sizes to come later. Um, and uh, another important piece of this is our target audience, um, even though it is military, it's, it's not necessarily for like the fittest of the fit. So we wanted to make sure that there was room for expansion and comfort in the belly area. And that was definitely a must. Um, Again, I mentioned earlier manufacturing processes, and uh, we wanted to make sure we were kind of staying, um, staying with standard, standard manufacturing process, not trying to do something that we can never take to production. Um, also, being a military product, uh, berry compliance is, is a key factor there. So I'm hoping to get this uh, to the warfighter, and that's, uh, that's, that's critical. Um, maintainability, so that was another key consideration. So um, we're trying to avoid special handling or washing requirements, um, trying to keep this as simple for the user as possible. So when you're done wearing, again, like I said, you can pull the sensor island and just throw that garment into the, into the washer without um, any issues. Um, over on the right, I have um, three iterations of the garment. So uh, not shown here are the dozens and dozens of samples uh, in between, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, to really get this right. And, um, but what you can see are the various zones called out on the shirt and um, our final version right now, which is on the, on the bottom right. Um, and the fabric orientation is clearly, clearly an important consideration here as well um, to minimize um, overstretching or like drooping of the shirt because again, this is for a very active user. Um, we started with a sleeve design, like you can see in, in the picture label with the one. Um, but those sleeves intend to induce more motion in the shirt. And again, we don't want that sensor moving around. So, so we made some improvements there, made some improvements in the types of fabric, the types of seams. And then, of course, um, how the garment was graded to improve comfort, but still um, provide some stability in that sensor band. So again, Clemson was was huge here and uh, a great organization to work with. Um, they're actually performing laundering testing on this right now. I don't have anything included here because it's kind of um, it ongoing, but so far good results uh, on the laundering front as well. So, um, you know, obviously we made this a little bit easier on ourselves just because we, we took the uh, electronics piece, um, we made that removable. So moving on to the flex sensor design, um, again, I, I mentioned we wanted to avoid some of the like the bulky puck-like solutions, those really hard solutions, um, because if you think about it, um, your, your military personnel have to wear lots of layers, lots of equipment, and um, sometimes when you have those, those bulky pucks, as soon as you put armor over those, they can become very uncomfortable. So um, we created this, this thin, flexible sensor island, um, and hopefully it's the first of several, but we wanted to focus on this first one, and this actually gets placed under the left pectoral muscle. Um, and this can read full ECG, temperature, breathing rate, accelerometry, um, plus you know additional metrics that can be derived from these core sensors. Um, and there is uh, the microprocessor right there uh, with the system. So everything's um, miniaturized on a flex board and can kind of flex and conform. Um, you can't really tell here, but this is basically um, quite, quite flexible. and can conform um, to, to various shapes and sizes of bodies. Um, we, we use some dry electrodes here. Um, they're unique in that they have these um, nubs and they provide some good contact. Um, so obviously we don't want to use the gels and things like that because um, those can get you know messy and it's it's not really practical from a deployment standpoint. So um, this particular dry electrode does do a pretty good job of penetrating hair and dead skin cells, um, so you wouldn't need to shave, which which is a plus. Um, so you can see the flexor sen uh, flex sensor uh, island on the top right. Um, it's a flex board and it's encapsulated in a, a skin safe elastomer. 
Um, so this helps protect components and, and makes it easier to handle. Um, obviously, you want to you know create something that's pretty robust, easy to use, and, and can kind of stand up to the all the misuse um, that might happen there. Um, obviously, a lot of iterations that we went through to kind of get this one right. Um, and um, uh, what what I did want to mention here, which I think is pretty obvious, but um, you know improvements to the circuit does, do not necessarily require changes to the garment and vice versa as you scale the garment or improve features of the garment for comfort or fit or something like that. It doesn't necessarily affect the sensor. So, so that kind of allows us to um, kind of keep improving this as a whole. Um, and uh, one thing I wanted to mention here is um, you can see in this picture, um, the sensor island actually gets inserted into the shirt through these grommet buttonholes. And that kind of leads us into our integration portion that, I, that I'm going to talk about here. Um, so the photos on the right show how we're connecting the sensor island into the shirt. So this is um, kind of the approach that we took. So we have this pocket that's accessible while worn and the island is basically slid into the pocket and the dry electrodes are um, popped through these buttonholes. Um, so the picture on the bottom right shows the inside of the shirt. Um, so this is inside out here. And you can see how the electrodes would come, uh, come in contact with the wearer. Um, so this provides the means to install and remove the island while wearing the shirt. Um, and then the other piece of integration, and um, again, I mentioned we kind of went with a wireless um, approach. But uh, obviously, communication is huge. If you're not going to do routed wires through the garment, you need to have a pretty robust and secure communication. Piece. So right now we're using a military narrowband RF communication. Um, later iterations or potentially for commercial applications can be low, uh, the low energy Bluetooth. Um, that's not really a, a huge leap there. But for right now, we wanted to keep it focused um, for this military application. And so that means you need this um, RF board and kind of this, this dongle here on the, uh, on the phone or the, the EUD, again, that Brian mentioned earlier. So, um, yeah, so right now it talks directly to the phone and we have an application for the phone. Um, but uh, as you can imagine, obviously there's a lot of, of different ways that this can communicate. Um, it communicates to a, a normal PC as well for testing purposes. Um, okay, so the next step, testing. Um, so the, you know, we've been fortunate to have several opportunities for field testing. Of course, all of these were last summer as COVID has certainly hit us all pretty hard and slowed things down in a number of ways. And I'm sure all of you are, are dealing with that right now. But um, so all of these tests were performed last year. And at that time we had the garment, but not a fully functional sensor island. So we proceeded to test, but we were, you know, solely focused on comfort and equipment compatibility um, without gathering that physiological data. And that's just kind of where, you know, where it hit in our, our program progress. But um, we were able to include a mock sensor island. So it was the same size and mass and, and um, flexibility and things like that with the dry electrodes so they can get a sense of what it felt like. Um, and uh, so one event was Vigilant Guard, and um, this was an event hosted here in Dayton, Ohio at the National Center for Medical Readiness, and it's an outdoor exercise. We brought three shirts, which is what we had at the time, and um, several participants wore that under their uniform and under their armor. And we did find that to be a successful event as they had no problems with the equipment interference and found it to be comfortable. So. You know, that was a, a step in the right direction and validated some of the, uh, uh, the comfort concerns that we had. So another event was the um, chemical biological operational analysis, or SABOA, um, which maybe some of you are familiar with that. But um, we tested six shirts there. Uh, we had four size, four size large and then two size medium, and we had nine different operators assess the fit and comfort with again, relevant gear, but instead of just having armor and outer gear, they had the you know, full uh, CBRNE equipment on. So it kind of had a different perspective of the type of equipment 
And again, we had um, a good response. And um, I listed a couple of the, the different comments from the report. So um, again, we were comfortable, again, under the protective suits, um, no mention of skin abrasion, because um, if you noticed in the um, pictures of the dry electrode, those nubs, when you see them, they're like, ooh, this doesn't look very comfortable. But when she put it on, you really don't feel that at all. And we were concerned with the additional um, weight and things like that. There, there was no no issues of skin abrasion or discomfort there. Um, and, and we got some good feedback in terms of, you know, that they're cooler and more comfortable. And um, I didn't mention this earlier, but the physiological monitoring, um, particularly the goal in this case, was to prevent overheating. So um, adding a heavier shirt or an uncomfortable shirt or a shirt that made them sweat more, things like that, obviously, was was contrary to the to the goal that we were trying to achieve. So um, so it's a, a pretty lightweight, breathable, sweat wicking uh, shirt. So so a lot of the users liked it just from that perspective. Um, so so obviously the the more challenging um, piece of this is making sure that the the sensors are doing what they're supposed to be doing. That you know essentially we're getting the data that we want to collect. Um, so once our sensors were working, we were able to put more attention on signal and data quality. And um, our initial testing showed that our data correlated well with the Zephyr. So the Zephyr does make a nice um, patch um, that, that we could use to compare. So we're able to put that patch on, put the shirt on, and, and basically just see if we're getting similar data. Um, and we wanted to expend, extend our testing beyond just our development group, our internal development group. And so we developed a, um, an IRB approved test protocol. Unfortunately, right when we were ready to test, COVID hit. And so we were slowed down by this. We actually needed to amend the protocol um, to ensure safety during COVID. So now we're just get, getting back into testing. So unfortunately, I don't have a lot to show you. I couldn't get uh, information together and get released. So, um, so what I can show you though, is that um, we have some readouts on the right. So this is the kind of information you're getting. Um, in the, the protocol, um, it's really designed to monitor folks through their normal rigorous exercise, so running, hiking, climbing, soccer, uh, basketball, whatever they, they, they want to do. So we're trying to get some really active folks to, to get out there and, and wear this and, and see what kind of data we get. Um, so again, I don't have a lot of data to show you. I apologize for that, but I hope that we'll be collecting that um, here very, very soon. Um, okay, so just to kind of wrap things up here, um, obviously there's a lot of considerations when uh, designing this garment and hopefully um, just sharing with you kind of the thought process and, and the considerations um, help to give you a little insight into kind of why we, why we did what we did and where we got to. Um, but again, balancing comfort and performance was really um, really really important to us and um, uh, reducing that motion artifact um, and allowing something to move with the person those are all um, challenges um, and as you all know it's not really just about sizing it right the construction and the stretch are also crucial to get that good sensor contact um, the dry electrode seems to be working pretty well despite hairy chests and and dead skin and things like that so we've been happy with that um, and again, I mentioned this, but it's, it's been nice because as the electronics and the textiles are, are kind of moving in parallel, again, mod to, to one doesn't necessarily affect the other. And so we can kind of keep iterating um, through this uh, um, fairly quickly and, and um, a lot of flexibility to be able to make improvements um, without having to go all the way back to the drawing board, uh, either on the garment side or the island side. Um, a lot, of, a lot of thoughts for the future. So um, obviously the, the first and foremost is, foremost is to collect additional data. And then um, we definitely know that there's some robustness improvements that we wanna make and just general productization um, uh, as steps that we would have to take. Um, I think uh, additional app development to improve the user experience and then moving to a manufacturing stage are all all things that, that we're um, interested in pursuing in the future. So I, I definitely wanted to uh, acknowledge um, 
the U.S. Army Medical Research and Development Command and the Defense Health Agency for funding this effort, and, and Bill and Carol, who've been um, great to work with uh, through this effort. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's all I had today. So I guess I just wanted to say thank you for listening, and I really appreciate your, your time today. Thank you, Kristen, for that outstanding presentation.